Okay, so I'm Keiji Shinzato from Lactane Institute of Technology. So thank you for coming today. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about technique to automatically organize big data for techies in Lactane. <coughs> so the Lactane is one of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world. In this platform, there are various kinds of techies data, such as a search query, the review from our users, and product description from our merchant. So these text data contains a very valuable information to our services. services. For example, the, from such queries, we can understand the user's interest, and from reviews, we can track the user's experience related to the product, and from product description, we can know the product in detail. But in order to pull this information, so we need to read and understand text data. The, if the size of text data is very small, so we can do that manually. However, the number of products in Lactem is very large. Uh, we officially announced that the, the number of products in Lactem each bar that reached 100 million in 2012. But the number of item product today is 258 million. The number of product is uh, two, almost 2.6 times larger than five years ago. So in order to understand how this data big is, so let's consider the time for reading this text data. So uh, it's a time for pop quiz. So <clears throat> what do you think? How long years do you need for reading description of 258 products? I will give you the four candidates uh, a, the four years, the B, 40 years, and C, four, 400 years, and D, 4,000 years. So please raise your hand to the one of them. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So who think A? Okay. Nobody. Okay. Who think B? Oh, some more. And who on C? Oh, majority. Okay. And who think D? Okay, so thank you for uh, thank you joining this quiz. So the answer is the C. The we need 400 years. So this is estimated by the estimated by the assumption that the other uh, the speed of reading of uh, a native Japanese speaker is 500 characters per minute on average. So from this figure, we can easily imagine that. Our, the, our data in that is very big, and also we can uh, imagine that it is impossible to read the text data manually. So this is why the, we need a technique to automatically organize big data for text in Latin. Okay, so in this talk, uh, I briefly uh, examine about two endeavors related to this topic. The first one is uh, information extraction from product data. And second one is a sentiment analysis on review data. So let's move to the first topic. The, as I mentioned, the, in that case, there is a large number of products. But unfortunately, the majority of them is not well organized. So it is unstructured data, like the one shown on the right, uh, left hand side. So, the product information is given by using the freestyle text. So, <clears throat> and on the other hand, the structured data is very, very handy for both human and computers. So if we successfully combine, convert the, our unstructured data to structured data, so we can offer more sophisticated functions such as facilitated navigation and beta recommendation. Also, we can do more deeper market research based on the structured data. So that's why we started to develop the technique to extract information from product data. So now we focus on the uh, extraction of brand. This is because the brand is one of the most important product attributes to the, our business. So we call this task brand extraction. The difficulty of brand extraction can be summarized as the two questions, ambiguity and diversity. So the reason why we faced ambiguity is that the sum of brand name 
has multiple senses. For example, the person has at least two senses. The first one is a luxury pen brand in the US, and the other is a hoodie in Japanese language. And another example is a Puma. The one is the uh, sports, sports brand in Germany, and the other is a knife brand in Germany. So in this, in this way, we need to disambiguate the sense of expression while extracting brand from text data. The second, uh, difficult, second major difficulty is the diversity, uh, which, is, which is well known as a long tail problem. Uh, Lactin uh, gives the various kind of product, so there is a large number of unknown brands in our data. But we still need to extract them in order to achieve the high performance on this task. In order to overcome these difficulties, we are taking an approach based on the di manually tailored dictionary. The advantage of this dictionary is that we can easily control the system behavior by editing the entry in the dictionary. And the other advantage is uh, we can easily understand why this error happened. This is because the reason for long extraction is either long entry in the dictionary or lack of entry in the dictionary. So this is an overview of our brand extraction technique. So the input for the technique is a product title and their genre, and the output from the technique is the input data with brand ID. In the first step, we apply the morphological analyzer in order to tokenize the given text data and to get the part of the speech tags for each token. After that, we list tokens matched with the dictionary entries and then select a single candidate which appear to the farthest to left in the title. So this is the place of this, this process is based on the based on the assumption that the brand name is likely to be put the header part of product title. The after the extraction, so we no, we need to normalize the spring variation on the extracted brand. So to do so, the, we heavily use the synonym dictionary. The, from this uh, slide, uh, you can see that the dictionary is for extraction and normalization play a crucial role in, the, in our technique. So uh, I will show you uh, our brand dictionary. In our, in our, di in our dictionary, uh, the brand expression are put with the relevant journal. The current number of entry is uh, 190,000. The relevant journal in the dictionary are very important for this ambiguation. So we employ the expression for the extraction only when uh, relevant genre is the same with the uh, given data. In the case of Parker, we retrieve the Parker only for product in uh, home and office supply. We do, we do not retrieve the Parker for uh, product under the fashion journal. So in this way, we can successfully uh, disambiguate the sense of expression when extracting the brand. So in order to create the dictionary, the, we utilize the uh, same structure data in our product data. The sum of our merchant already provided the semi-structure data, semi data, the like a table and the listing, in order to describe the product specification. So we uh, heavily utilize uh, this data. So this data can easily can be easily passed by using a, a couple of uh, regular expressions. So we apply the regular expression and in order to uh, extract brand expression and the relevant journal from this data. And we also employ the machine learning technique to, in order to enrich the brand dictionary. But as you know, uh, when applying the machine learning technique to gain the training data, the construction of training data is very costly and time consuming. So here, the, we try to automatically construct the training data set from the brand dictionary and the product data. But we simply annotate the expression in text which, uh, which matches with the brand, brand dictionary entry. So through this process, we can uh, get the annotated text. After that, we train a machine learning model by using 
this annotated text and then apply the model on the product data in each one in order to get the candidate of brand, brand dictionary. After getting candidate, so we uh, find the existing uh, brand with a new relevant genre. So we, regard them, we, we regard them as a new entries and also uh, we do check manually in order to filter out the wrong candidate. And we uh, update the brand dictionary by using a new entry. So we iteratively run this cycle again and again in order to enrich the brand dictionary. So after extraction, the, we normalize the spelling variation on uh, extracted brand by using synonym dictionary. So in order to explain about normalization, normalization step, I'm gonna use this example. So this example shows from this uh, product data under the shoes category, shoes genre, the, our technique extract uh, Nike written in uh, Japanese. And also from another shoes data, our technique extract Nike written in English. And from back data, the, our technique extract Nike written in English too. So what we wanna do here is that we, uh, we wanna recognize so these spellings refer to the same brand Nike. So this means we need to automatically assign the brand ID like this. So you may think that so if we have the synonym dictionary like this, then we can do that. But problem, problem is not so easy. Actually, in Lapten, so there is another Nike, so which is an office furniture brand in Japan. So we want to distinguish this Nike and this Nike. But we, we cannot do that if we have, if, if our synonym dictionary contains only the brand ID and the synonyms. In, in order to differentiate them, we need the information on when we can use entry in the dictionary. So this is, uh, this is because, this is why our synonym dictionary contains not only ID and synonym, synonyms, but also a general information. In order to create a synonym dictionary, we first find the candidate, we first, we first find the candidate automatically by analyzing the junk code and the data from Wikipedia and by calculating a sem semantic similarity among brand expression. And then uh, we check them manually whether they can be regarded as a synonym or not. Now the dictionary has 200, 200, over 200,000 triplets of genre, and brand ID, and synonyms. So through this process, so we automatically extract brand from product data in Lacten. So let's take a look at the performance of our technique. So we manually assign the brand to 500 randomly selected product titles. The percentage of product title, including brand, was 90, oh, sorry, 70%. On, uh, on this data set, the, our brand extraction technique achieved the, about 90% in precision and 64% in recall. So these figures means that, that we can automatically extract correct brand for 100 million product in 260 million product. So that's our technique is already used in the actual service of Lacten. So far, I talked about the technique to extract information from product data. And from this slide, I'd like to talk about the technique to analyze the sentiment mentioned in the review data. The lab can provide two types of review data. The one is a review data of product, and the other is a review data of merchant. So this second topic related to the uh, review data of merchants. So we think that the one of the basic needs of our shopper is to purchase a good product from quality merchant. So in order to support this needs, we provide the review data of a merchant like this. 
by looking at this data, we can roughly understand how good our merchant is. And but if we, if, if we want to know the merchant in detail, so we need to uh, read the text data here. So because the sum of uh, aspect is not covered by the rating. But the problem is that the sum of our, sum of our merchant has a large number of review text. Review text. So, so we need a technique to automatically analyze reviews. So based on uh, this background, we implemented the system to automatically classify the sentences in the review data into the aspect and the sentiment quality. For example, that if we give the sentence item was nicely packaged, the system should output the aspect mentioned in the given sentence is a package and its sentiment quality is positive. In order to create the, this kind of system, the we need to solve two problems. The first one is what kind of aspect should we design? And the other is how do we develop the system to perform it? For solving the first issue, we actually did positive and negative reviews in order, in order to reveal what kind of things mentioned in our daily data. So as a result, we found that so there are 14 aspects in our review data. So this slide shows the first seven aspects, the shipping, service, communication, shop, item, repeat, package. And this slide shows the, the last seven uh, aspects, the stock quality information that provided, by, provided at the product page, and the cancel, the price, the lockdown itself, and payment, and others. For solving the second issue, the, we employed the machine learning technique. Here, we annotated the 1,500 reviews. So this data contained 5,200 sentences. We asked the annotator to assign the uh, proper aspect and the proper sentiment plurality for every sentence in this data set. The, for example, annotator should assign the sipping and the positive to the sentence I was very pleased at how quickly I received it. The sum of sentence has the multiple aspects and the multiple sentiment polarity. In that case, the we, uh, we asked the annotator to annotate, to assign every possible aspect and every possible sentiment polarity. <coughs> so this annotation task took uh, over 100 hours by a well-trained annotator. The after constructing the training data, the we trained mod, uh, classification model using passive aggressive algorithm and conditional random field. We use a very ba very basic feature, uh, back of words, aspect dictionary, the sentiment quality dictionary, and the syntactic information. The current performance on this data set is for aspect classification, we achieve the 82% in precision and 46% in decode. And for sentiment classification, we achieved 84% in precision and 77% in decode. So this is a snapshot, screenshot of the our POC system. So this system based utilizing the, our technique I mentioned. The left hand left hand side, so you can see uh, the input of the for, of the system is a. Uh, uh, merchant name and uh, aspect. So the left, left hand side, you can see the list of values, uh, including the sentence, categorizing to the specified uh, aspect. In this case, this, the values, including the sentence, like describing the sitting is listed here. On the right hand side, the, you can see the trend of aspect. The uh, in this case, so this graph shows the, the sipping positive trend, trend and the sipping negative trend. So we can uh, create this kind of uh, data, graph data uh, from data, review data we have automatically. So let me conclude this talk. The, in that then, there is a various kind of text data such as a, a reviewed and query keyword. So these text data contain the very valuable information to our business. 
but in order to pull uh, information, uh, we need to read and understand. But size of text, size of text data in lab time is uh, grossed by the hours, so we need an automatic, take automatic methodology. So that's why the lab time develops a technique in house to exploit big data for text in, in the service. So in this talk, I briefly talk about the information extraction technique and the sentiment analysis technique. So that is from me. The thank you for listening. Uh, we have the Q and A session. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Based on your slide, uh, we see that the precision is still below 90%. Uh, what techniques do you think you can employ in the future to make it uh, pass 90%? Okay. Thank you for uh, comment. Uh, thank you for question. Actually, the uh, long exception comes from the long entry in the brand dictionary. So we need to uh, elaborate, uh, we need to elaborate the dictionary quality in order to remove the long extraction. So to do so, we need to uh, heavily utilize a um, machine learning technique to collect the correct uh, brand, co to, uh, gather correct brand expression with relevant journal from this data. And then we need to assign them any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, I think that's all for this session. Thank you, Mr. Sinkatu.